Zeus from Stories from Greece, written by Templeton Institute for Neurology, narrated by Catherine Carter. Even though he was a god, Zeus was born into the world much like any other baby. His parents were elder gods called Titans, and they were the very first beings to rule the world. Zeus's father was Cronus, and his mother was Rhea. Cronus was a terrible, jealous and greedy being, and a wicked father. He feared that one day he would lose the throne, and therefore his position as king. So, to make sure he would never be challenged, he imprisoned all of his brothers in a dungeon. But even worse, every time his wife Rhea gave birth to one of their children, Cronus would swallow the baby. But when Rhea gave birth to her last child, a boy named Zeus, she managed to trick Cronus. Instead of handing over her new baby, she gave her husband a rock wrapped in blankets to swallow. She quickly arranged to send Zeus away to the Greek island of Crete to keep him safe from the treachery of his father. Zeus was raised secretly by a number of enchanted beings. One fed him goat's milk and honey. Small gods called Corets made lots of loud noise by dancing and banging drums so that Cronus would not hear the cries of the baby. Another hid him by dangling him on a rope from a tree. You see, dear children, his evil father, Cronus, ruled over the heavens, the earth and the sea. So when Zeus was suspended between earth, sea and sky, he was invisible to his father. Soon came the day where Zeus was grown up enough to claim the kingdom of the world and he plotted a battle against his father and the other elder gods, the Titans. But first, Zeus cut open Cronus's stomach to expose all of his brothers and sisters, freeing them into the world. Then Zeus released Cronus's imprisoned brothers from their dungeon. These fierce titans were called the Gigantes, Hecator Hares, and Cyclops. To their gratitude, the Cyclops gave Zeus the power of thunder and lightning bolts, the most distinguished power a god can have. Zeus was also born with other powers, such as being able to shapeshift or turn himself or others into anything he wanted. So together, Zeus, his brothers and sisters, along with his own father's brothers, joined their forces together and conquered Cronus and the other Titans. The defeated Titans were then cast into a shadowy underworld, known as Tartarus. One of the Titans who fought against Zeus was named Atlas. Zeus punished him by ordering him to hold up the sky for all eternity. By the time the war was over, the world's population had grown to include humans, beasts and half-gods, who were a mixture of mortals and gods. The time had come for the kingdom of the world to be ruled by Zeus and his brothers and sisters. Unlike his father, Zeus was fair and just. He drew straws with his brothers Poseidon and Hades, to see who would become the new king of the gods. Zeus won the draw, and he officially became the ruler of the earth and the sky and the lord of Mount Olympus, the highest mountain of Greece. From that day on, each of Zeus's siblings controlled a single part of the world. His brother, Poseidon, was god of the sea, while his other brother, Hades, ruled the underworld. His sister, Hera, became goddess of marriage and childbirth. Another sister, Demeter, became goddess of corn, grain, and the harvest. And the third sister, Hestia, was less a goddess and more a keeper of the hearth, the symbol of the house around which a newborn child is carried before it is received into the family. All were mighty in their own right, and each took great pleasure in carrying out the tasks set to them by their brother, the great Zeus. Ruling the world was enjoyable at first, especially because Zeus didn't really have too much to do. After all, he had invited everything up between his brothers and sisters. Zeus often amused himself by checking on how his siblings were running their kingdoms. He would change himself into an octopus and visit his brother Poseidon under the sea. But Zeus had no fondness for water as he found it cold and murky. Sometimes he would go far beneath the earth to visit his brother Hades, but it was so dark and gloomy in the underworld that Hades would light huge fires, and Zeus found it far too hot for his liking. 
Zeus would also find great amusement by hurling thunder and lightning bolts from his home on Mount Olympus, which would frighten the humans, beasts and half-gods down below and annoy the other gods who felt that Zeus was just showing off. But Zeus was after the mighty ruler of the universe and he felt entitled to amuse himself however he saw fit. <laughs> Now, dear children, Zeus was the most handsome of all the gods. He was as tall as ten men with incredibly strong, huge muscled arms and a broad, robust chest. His long, bushy beard was common to the gods in those times, signifying his greatness. His shoulder-length, thick blonde hair identified him to everyone as the mighty being that he was and made him attractive to women. Likewise, Zeus had a great fondness for beautiful women. From an early age, he attracted women and married several times. Each of his wives gave him children, but he couldn't seem to stay with just one person. His sixth wife was one of his favourites, the lovely goddess called Leto. But just like all the other marriages, Zeus was restless, and his union with Leto didn't last long. So while Leto was pregnant with twins, Zeus was already looking for someone else. His seventh lover and the next woman he chose to marry was his sister, Hera. You might think this very strange, dear children, but don't forget that Zeus and the other gods were so powerful they could do anything they wanted, and the world was so new that the rules we live by today did not apply to them. When Zeus began dating Hera, he had to do it in secret so that his mother would not find out, as Zeus knew she would not approve. At first, Hera wanted nothing to do with Zeus's advances, so Zeus turned himself into a bird and appeared outside her window in the rain. Hera saw the poor bird and kindly brought him into the shelter of her bosom to warm and dry him. Zeus immediately returned to his true form and persuaded Hera to marry him. The wedding of these Olympians was no small occasion. All the gods and goddesses attended, bringing with them marvellous gifts including a wondrous tree that bore golden apples. Zeus and Hera's glorious wedding night lasted 300 years. Quite a party. They had four children together, but sadly, Zeus's marriage to Hera was not happy either. Hera was a very jealous wife and she had a bad temper. She was especially jealous of Leto, Zeus's ex-wife, and had her chased out of the kingdom by a dragon, even while she was pregnant with Zeus's twins. Leto fled to the island of Delos, where she gave birth to her twin boys Apollo and Artemis. Now, I must explain that the children of gods and goddesses are not like ordinary children. They grow much faster, and of course, they are born with extraordinary powers, which increase as they grow. By the time they were just a few weeks old, both boys were excellent archers and could shoot a bow and arrow with the greatest accuracy. They adored their mother and protected her by killing a dragon and a giant who had tried to attack her. As the boys grew into teenagers, Leto realised that she was the mother of two exceptionally handsome and powerful young gods. She knew this would please Zeus and make him proud. So she returned to Zeus's favour on Olympus. Hera was not happy about this, but Leto remained on Olympus anyway, knowing that while Zeus was around, Hera would not dare to harm her. So Leto spent many of her days happily hunting with her sons. One day, Zeus, in his boredom, decided to leave his home on Mount Olympus and visit Earth to see if there was anything of interest to entertain him. Soon he came to a river, where a glint on the water caught his eye he saw a beautiful river, Nymph. I should explain, dear children, that a nymph is a female magical being. Not quite a goddess, but not a human either. I suppose you would say that nymphs are like fairies, with certain powers of enchantment. This nymph's name was Io, and from the moment Zeus set eyes on her, he was completely enchanted. Zeus wanted to talk to Io and get to know her better, but he knew that the jealous Hera would be wondering where he was and would most probably be watching him with an eagle eye. So Zeus decided to cover the earth with a thick coat of clouds to hide himself. 
But Hera was no fool, and before long she realized what Zeus was up to. To save himself, Zeus quickly turned Io into a little white cow and acted very surprised when Hera appeared at his side. Oh, dear wife, I was walking by the river when this little white cow appeared from nowhere, he said. Hera smirked at her husband and replied, What a lovely cow! May I have it as a present? To keep the peace and prevent his jealous wife from flying into a fit of rage, Zeus had no choice but to agree. Even though Zeus was a powerful god, Hera seemed to have powers of her own to make Zeus agree to anything she wished. Hera imprisoned Io on a remote island, under heavy guard, and refused to tell Zeus where. But Zeus outsmarted her by sending his son Apollo to find her. Apollo used his tracking and archery skills to kill the guards watching over Io. Zeus then changed her back to her original form, and after her frightening ordeal, she decided to spend the rest of her days wandering the earth.